I'm Patty Peterson, and this morning I'm going to go into a freezing cold river to try to catch a trout with nothing but my bare hands and a makeshift net. This is going to get interesting. Snaking between the epic mountains that give Montana its magnificence are a series of rivers that have cut through the bedrock of time. Today the crew and I are headed deep into the wilderness to explore the freezing cold waters of Belt Creek. Getting there will be a challenge of its own, as we need to take rugged backcountry roads that are usually only traveled by open range cattle. Belt Creek is the perfect environment to encounter the rainbow trout, a lightning quick fish species that is typically caught with rod, reel, and fly. Only today I won't be fly fishing. My mission is to use a slightly more primitive method by safely capturing a trout using nothing more than a makeshift net that I have built from a willow stalk, ah, that is perfect, some paracord, and my shirt. The producing team thinks this is impossible, and I bet you do too, but I'm confident that if I can find a trout in shallow water, I'll be able to pull it off and essentially catch a fish with my bare hands. Wow, and yeah, there are definitely trout down in that water. It's a whole big pocket of them right here. All right, the good news is that I'm seeing lots of fish. Bad news is they're in deep water. What I want to do is move upstream, find a narrow pocket of water where I can get in just about knee deep, try to scoop one of these fish up, get it out of the water so you guys can get an up close look. All right, let's keep moving and uh, hopefully we come across some shallow water. I'm looking to see if there's any fish that may have gotten marooned off of the main course of the river. Out of any of the pockets of water I've seen today, this is probably the best spot for us to find a fish. But if there's anything in there, it's probably up underneath the back of the rocks. It's darker back there. Uh, trout are very sensitive to light. They want to stay out of the light so they can stay away from any potential predators. Uh, let me just check up in this corner here. There's a fish right there. There's a fish right back in that corner. Oh, you I see his face sticking towards us? I got him. That is a rainbow trout. Yep. I'm going to go in very, very slowly. Now these fish are incredibly timid. All right, what I want to do is try to scoop them up as gently as possible, get them over here in the main section of the river. Now, we're only going to have a couple of minutes to film with it if I can actually catch it, so this is going to have to be quick. All right, I'm going to get this behind him. I definitely don't want him to dirt backwards. Oh, there he is, there, there he, is. he is. Okay, oh, good, 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 go, 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 go. Hold on, hold on, don't, don't. Okay, he's still up there, he's up there. Okay, yeah, move slow, move slow, slow. I lost him. Ah, almost though, almost. They are fast, that's for sure. How does a trout even end up in a pool like this? You can see at some point where this water fed off up here. Uh, it probably got confused in this area, found itself in the rocks, fluttered into here, and then it said, okay, well, I'm in water that's comfortably deep to swim back and forth. And now it's, it's pretty much marooned. I mean, this is like almost a little pond off the side of the main river. It's funny, you guys are only going to ever see one take of this. <laughs> but what are we into our fourth attempt now? Yeah. All right, fourth time's the charm. The reason that Mark is using a stick is not to poke the fish, but we're creating vibrations on the back rock wall, and we're hoping to kind of corral it towards the shallow water. This is definitely the most difficult capture we've ever attempted. Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh! Oh. Now we're going to make our seventh attempt at rescuing this trout. All right, ready? Oh, there he is. You see him? Yeah. Shallows? Yep. Okay, good. Right under your legs. Attempt number nine. Oh, no. Oh. 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 He was right there. Attempt number ten at catching the fish. And the water is freezing cold. What'd you say, Mark? About 35 degrees Fahrenheit? Yes. Oh. And this is where it happens every single time. There he is. There he is. Come on, left. Come on, left. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Yeah, I got him. I got him. Don't let him go. I don't. I don't. Do not I let him, him go. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Oh, you gotta see him. You gotta see him. Okay, here, let's, 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 let
Okay, yeah, yeah, easy, yeah. easy, easy. Okay, okay. Finger. wow. Look at that. That is a rainbow trout. All right, let's get him up here into the light. I want to have him out of the water for a couple of seconds. We did it. <laughs> Look at how beautiful that fish is. I can't believe you caught that fish. I can't believe I caught it either. Now, the reason that I'm keeping this fish underwater is because they stress very, very easily. I'm gently just holding on to it, making sure that the water is flowing through its mouth and out its gills. And we're only going to be able to hold on to this fish for a couple of minutes. And one amazing thing about rainbow trout is they actually return to the spot that they were born during spawning season. And that's why we are seeing so many of these beautiful trout swimming upriver. Now the quick way to easily identify the rainbow trout is this greenish coloration and this beautiful pinkish stripe that runs down the lateral line of the body. Now let's talk about what the rainbow trout eats. This is an opportunistic feeder. They'll eat anything from crustaceans on the floor of the river, little fish, other fish eggs, you name it. If they can get their teeth on it, it's fair game. Now a group of trout is called a hover, and that's because when they float in the current like this, they swim back and forth very slowly keeping their balance, water just flowing through the gills, and then in bursts of speed, they shift up through these white waters and get into the deeper, darker pockets. Hey, he just wants to get back into the water, but what an experience. It took us about three hours to catch this fish, but I did it with your help, Mark, and the makeshift net, and there you have it. One beautiful rainbow trout. My goodness, what a beauty. I would high five you right now, but I don't want you to drop the fish. No, I don't want to drop the fish either. He's really <laughs> wanting to get back into the water at this point. Okay. Oh! And he got away. That must have been the moment that he decided that's it. I'm heading back off into the wild. Wow, what an experience. Working all afternoon to save a rainbow trout out of a maroon pool. Have you guys ever had any up close fish experiences? Tell me about them in the comment section below. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Man, that was awesome. Woo, woo, I can't believe we did it. Ah. If you thought that was one wild adventure, check out these other animal encounters. And don't forget, subscribe to follow me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. This episode of Breaking Trail was brought to you by the Buy Power Card from Capital One. Every purchase brings you closer to a new Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, or Cadillac vehicle.